Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, <clears throat> DwyerSportsBetting.com, ScratchyThroat.com. Today is August the 20th, 2017. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in this day and age where we're talking about a guy in his first boxing match facing a, an unbeaten fighter who's a surefire Hall of Famer in Floyd Mayweather, let's get back to reality. Right? Let's talk about true elites in the sport of boxing. Men who actually belong in the conversation of the best pound for pound currently. Right? We're not, you know, with all due respect to Floyd, he's 40 years old. Um, I don't believe Floyd belongs on this list at this time. Let's focus on guys who are in their primes or are close to their primes who have a viable argument that they are the best in the sport pound for pound. Now, one of them fought last night, Terrence Crawford. Crawford owns all of the belts at 140 pounds. Another is the man who was there last night, commenting on the fight, Andre Ward, right? Crawford and Ward have a lot in common, a lot in common, right? They can fight you orthodox, they can fight you southpaw. They can fight you on their back foot. They can fight you on their front foot. They have foot speed. They have the gift of timing. An argument can be made and we'll discuss it. <clears throat> now what Crawford did last night in jumping inside between the wide shots of Ndongo and taking out his body is very similar to what Andre Ward did in the rematch against Kovalev, right? Other guys who, in my opinion, have a claim on being the best pound for pound would include Mikey Garcia. He's a very important figure because he could fight Crawford at 140. Both guys would be unbeaten. Garcia's a different type fighter than Crawford right? Both guys would be unbeaten. Quite frankly, that fight right now would be one of the very best fights that could be made in boxing. That's if Crawford decides to continue to stay at 140 pounds. Another guy is, and I understand this is controversial because many of you are on the other side of the play for his next fight. Another guy is Golovkin. Right? Understand, Golovkin and Mikey Garcia, let's just break it down in groups. Golovkin and Mikey Garcia are different than Crawford and Ward in that those two guys are one-punch knockout artists. They can take you out in one punch. They don't have to set you up the whole way. Golovkin went through a streak years, folks, several title defenses where his opponents did not make it to the end of the fight. Golovkin's power is such that Kell Brook's corner throws in the towel in the first half of the fight and pundits were praising Kell Brook for hanging in there against Golovkin, right? Brook didn't even make it to the seventh round. And that was supposed to be an accomplishment. In my opinion, the best fights in boxing have these master chess players. Guys like Crawford and Andre Ward against these hardcore sluggers who are two-handed. Both Mikey Garcia and Golovkin are two-handed who have boxing skills. Right? And who do things that prevent the kind of thing that happened to Ndongo last night. Now let's set up the let's set up the 
paradigm for the fight. Understand Freddie Roach, Manny Pacquiao's trainer, was in Victor Postal's corner when Victor Postal lost to Terrence Crawford. Right? I myself thought Postal would do better than he did. Crawford on the move that night, and that's the thing with Crawford and Andre Ward. They tailor their style to whoever they're fighting. So, while both guys jumped inside last night, well, put it this way, Crawford jumped inside last night, Ward in his last fight, right? Their fights where both guys show you the foot speed they have. Crawford was on the move against Victor Postal. Fought a masterpiece. Drops Postal. Embarrasses Postal. It left such an impression on Freddie Roach that Freddie Roach in an interview before this fight said that he didn't think at this age Manny Pacquiao would be able to hold his own against Terence Crawford. At a minimum, Roach believes Pacquiao would need a few more fights to work his way into the kind of condition where fighting Terence Crawford would even be a consideration. And understand, Crawford and Pacquiao have the same promoter, Bob Arrow. Theoretically, that fight can be made quickly Manny has talked about how he could easily lose weight to fight at 140. Of course, there are rumors that Crawford is having a problem making weight at 140. Conceivably, that fight could be in Pacquiao's neighborhood of 147. So just understand that Crawford is so good that a guy like Freddie Roach, right, one of the best trash talkers as trainer, Right, a guy who will say, hey, this opponent has no shot against my fighter. When it comes to Terrence Crawford, Freddie Roach basically is saying, hey, my fighter's not ready for Terrence Crawford. Right, for the record, too, Manny Pacquiao, different fight style. He's different than Ward and Crawford. Right, Manny Pacquiao is what I call a fastball pitcher. In other words, Ward and Crawford are two-handed. Different styles for different situations, different opponents. Manny Pacquiao to me is predominantly one-handed, great left, right? Great left. Fights the same style, in my opinion, for every opponent, right? Is getting by on athleticism and power and talent. In other words, He's getting by on a fastball that's up in the high 90s. More so than he is getting by on boxing know-how and strategy. Right? For the record, I feel Crawford, as great as he looked in this fight against Ndongo, would have problems with Manny Pacquiao. Let me break with Freddie Roach, Pacquiao's own trainer. Because Pacquiao is faster than Terrence Crawford, and in my opinion, hits harder than Terrence Crawford. I'm saying this after a fight where Crawford gets the KO, right? And Dongo hits the canvas multiple times. The last time Dongo hits the canvas, he does not want to continue. You can tell that from the referee counting and the guy being on the canvas, not looking too eager to get back up, ending his unbeaten streak. And I say that after Pacquiao's last fight, where Pacquiao is pushed to the distance against Jeff Horn. Understand, Jeff Horn is a guy who can make the fight rough and tumble. Not about precision, but about brute force. I don't believe that's Terrence Crawford's game. Now, to the gamblers, the odds on this Crawford and Dongo fight were terrible. Right here online, I try to focus on fights where gamblers can actually profit. Here, Crawford went off as a 20 to 1 favorite. In other words, bet 20 bucks to win $1, right, with the return of your 20 buck outlay. 
I didn't think that was a good risk reward, right? When you're looking at a fight like this, you really have to think about the over-unders, right? You would have hit if you took the under nine and a half rounds in this fight. But even that was risky because, again, Ndongo, unbeaten, Ndongo knows how to use Lance. Now, in this fight, he made some mistakes. We'll talk about the boxing style simply because I think it helps people play odds maker, decide whether to bet on a fight. Right? Understand that if you throw combinations, which is what Ndongo was doing last night, if you're a combination puncher, or you're going to try to be a combination puncher, right? Throwing punches left, right, left, right, left, right, series of punches at a time, punches in bunches. Well, if you throw your punches a little bit wide, in my opinion, you can't throw combinations in the early rounds unless you've hurt the other guy. Right? Why? Because when you throw combinations, you leave yourself open rather than have a hand tucked for defensive purposes. Right? It could be here. It could be down by your side protecting your body. It could be up here protecting your ear or your chin. When you're throwing combinations, your hands are on the move. Now, if you throw them wide, there's more of a gap between your punches. And if you're facing, quite frankly, Terrence Crawford or Andre Ward, some technical guy who knows your style better than you do because he's studied it and he's adapted his style for that fight to capitalize on your weaknesses Right? The Terrence Crawford is going to read the gap in your punches. He's going to know you are not defensively ready. That you're using both your hands for offense and none of them for defense. And he's going to time an entry point. So in Dongo, what he should have done, right? And he'll think this through, understand if Crawford abdicates at 140 because he can no longer make weight. And Dongo's going to be in play. What Ndongo should have done, given his height, given his ability to use length, is he shouldn't have opened up in the early rounds. Don't open up when your opponent still has foot speed. What he should have done is shot a jab in the early rounds and thrown occasional power shots. Not with both hands. One hand always had to be home and he should have just thrown that left hand in choice moments. He should have been lower volume in the early rounds. He should have protected himself better in the early rounds. Don't go in there with a two-handed attack against the counterpuncher with timing. That's a recipe for disaster. So what happened, in my opinion, is that Ndongo tried to turn this fight into a shootout against a guy who's cool, calm, and collected who is smart enough to be looking for specific moments. Right? So you'll notice Ndongo doesn't how do you put it? Protect himself enough. Teddy Atlas is great on the telecast. He talks about how there are gaps in Ndongo's defense that Crawford could capitalize on because Ndongo's throwing wide punches. So it takes a little bit longer to get there. Straight, a straight line between two points is the shortest distance. Ndongo's throwing punches on a loop. Now understand. That's actually a strength of his because his weirdness, his unorthodox style is what throws off 
technicians like Edward Troyanovsky, the guy who he beat in Russia. Right? It's when a guy's throwing shots on a loop and Golovkin throws punches on a loop, it's hard for a technician to fully know where the punch is going to land. Right? You put a hand up like this, the punch has a loop on it, it might hit you back here. The problem, though, is you can't really start throwing a lot of looping punches until the fight's in the fifth, sixth, or seventh rounds. Right? And Dongo should have been awkward in the first few rounds. Should have just been in there shooting a jab, trying to back up Crawford playing it conservatively, taking the air out of the crowd. It's a Crawford crowd. The fight's in Crawford's backyard. You should have had people in the crowd feeling antsy as the fight gets to the fourth and fifth rounds. Right? If he doubled and tripled up on the jab and kept Crawford outside, right, or had a plan where He's closed, he's just shooting a jab, but if Crawford comes in, right, he would have a trap, an uppercut, maybe a punch to the solar plexus, some punch prepared, just in case Crawford slips his jab. And if he's a master fighter, he would set it up angles-wise where Crawford could only slip his jab one way. Now, that's not the way Ndongo fought the fight, and you know why, because he was unbeaten. Because he had been to different continents and had knocked off the house fighter. Right? He, he beat Ricky Burns in the UK, folks. He beat Troyanovsky, I know I'm butchering the name, in Russia. So here he is in Nebraska against Terrence Crawford, and you know... He had no fear. He was here for the win. The fight against Troyanovsky, first round KO. Well, guess what? He wasn't fighting Troyanovsky. He was fighting Terrence Crawford, a guy with timing. And the problem with fighting these Terrence Crawford ward type guys is you look at Crawford in other fights and he's a different person. Because in that other fight, Crawford has tailored his style of that fighter. So it's Crawford on the outside against Victor Postal. He's on the move. It's Crawford on the inside against Ricky Burns. Right here, you had Crawford playing Andre Ward. Just like Andre Ward is outside against Kovalev in the rematch, then Andre Ward jumps inside. Right? Gets by the jab, hurts Kovalev first from distance, gets by the jab, is inside throwing power shots, and is doing so at angles. Right? Ward's over here. Ward's over here. Ward's over here. Here you have Terrence Crawford. What's interesting in the last series is when Crawford jumps inside, he doesn't just throw one punch to the body. You'll notice Crawford actually throws two body shots. Right? Crawford has it timed to the point where when he comes inside, he knows he's throwing murderous shots. He knows he's going to stay inside. And Dongo understood that Crawford had his rhythm. In other words, as Ndongo opened up, a lot of opponents had Crawford gone backwards and been hit by Ndongo's shots. You could have imagined Ndongo then trying to open up. But Crawford knew the spacing. Crawford is defensively blessed. Crawford reads the angles. So when Ndongo throws his big but wide shots, right, tries to make it a combination, Crawford knows how to slip the first shot and then has the foot speed to jump inside. Great timing by Crawford. This is what happens when you have a guy who can switch between orthodox and southpaw. The fact that Ndongo is a southpaw didn't throw 
Crawford off like it threw Ricky Burns off. Also, Crawford has more foot speed than Ricky Burns, has better timing than Ricky Burns. So whereas Ricky Burns was caught outside and had a problem with Ndongo's left, the entire Ndongo-Ricky Burns fight. Here, Ndongo is on the clock as he tries to open up against Crawford, who's looking for gaps to jump inside. So let me say this, if I'm Terrence Crawford, right now I only fight the big fights. By the way, same advice to Andre Ward. During the telecast, Andre Ward said a great line. They were talking about Crawford unifying four belts at 140. And Andre Ward said, you know, this is inspiring me to think about unifying the belts in my weight class, right? Words to that effect. Let's hope Andre follows through on that. He's already fought Kovalev. You have a giant out there at light heavyweight, Adonis Stevenson. Let's hope they give us that fight. Word of advice to have that fight in Canada, right? Set it up so that more than 6,000 people show up for the fight. Right? Blockbuster fights like that deserve blockbuster crowds. Now, here with Crawford, if I'm Crawford, if I go to 147, right, I have to stay away from Sean Porter. I know people disagree with me. I'm just telling you Porter is a bracket buster. Right, You know when you fill out an NCAA college basketball bracket, <laughs> there's that one team in the bracket that just blows up your bracket. Right, Wins a game they shouldn't have won and then continues winning games. That's Sean Porter. Understand, if Crawford jumps inside on Sean Porter, Porter will be ready for him. If Crawford goes on his back foot against Sean Porter. Sean Porter will be able to catch up with him. Right? Maybe now is the time for Crawford to think about fighting Keith Thurman. Why? Because Keith Thurman was recently in a hospital having surgery. That would be a, tantalating, uh, a tantalizing fight. Right? The time to fight a great champ. And I believe Thurman has proven himself, is when that champ is recovering from injury. A Crawford Mikey Garcia fight would be one of the best a sport could deliver. Also, Crawford against Jorge Linares. That's a fascinating fight because Linares has the hand speed, but he also throws shorter punches than Julius Ndongo. You couldn't fight Linares and just assume that you're going to be able to jump inside between the gaps and close the show with a body attack like Crawford did here. Let me just warn Crawford, though, and I know Freddie Roach is hesitant. I'd be careful with Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao still has hand speed. Guys with power only have to be bright once. Right, let's just say Mikey Garcia, while two-handed and Pacquiao's one-handed, doesn't have the hand speed and doesn't have the foot speed and the unpredictability of a Manny Pacquiao, who I still think is dangerous. In any event, let me hear from you. Let's just say Terrence Crawford is a great champ with a viable claim on being the very best in the sport pound for pound, right? He's in the company of people like Andre Ward and Mikey Garcia, right? And Golovkin. Tell us in the comment section to this video who you think wins. Crawford, Mikey Garcia. Now might be the right time to fight Mikey too.
because Mikey doesn't have a lot of experience at 140 pounds. You don't want Mikey Garcia getting comfortable at 140 pounds, right? You want to hit him when he comes to the neighborhood and is still figuring out the road map, right? Once he learns the streets, you could be in trouble there. Tell us who wins in the comment section to this video between Mikey Garcia and Terrence Crawford. Let's also include Andre Ward in the conversation. Andre Ward and Donna Stevenson. Why hasn't that fight happened yet? Right? Somebody tell me how Adonis Stevenson got to his late 30s without fighting Andre Ward. What happens if those two fight at the Bell Center in Canada? Right? Give us your prognostication. Also, Sean Porter, who I feel is a gambler's best friend. Tell us what happens if Sean Porter fights either Mikey Garcia or Terrence Crawford. How do you see that fight? And Manny Pacquiao. I know many of you believe Manny Pacquiao should retire. Right? This is the same Manny Pacquiao who fought an unbeaten Chris Algieri and knocked him down several times in the fight. This is the same Manny Pacquiao who had the referee in the Jeff Horn fight go to Jeff Horn's corner and basically tell Jeff Horn, you better show me something this round, or I'm pulling the plug on the fight. Right? Are rumors of Manny Pacquiao's demise a bit exaggerated? Let us know in the comment section to this video. Let me also say congratulations to Terrence Crawford, dominant performance. I'm not convinced that things are over at a championship level for Ndongo. I just think he needs to watch some Vitaly Klitschko films and figure out how to not open up too early in fights against guys with the foot speed to make him pay for it. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.